What's up Midpoint? Merry Christmas. It is the merriest time of the year. Today we're starting a new series titled Halo. And I know when you hear that word, some of you refer to the video game Halo or you think about angels. And that's what I want us to focus on today. We're going to be talking about an amazing story where the angel Gabriel appeared. And today our main idea is God's timing is always right. I want you to remember that God's timing is always right. It's sometimes really hard to believe that, especially during the holiday season. This holiday season, for some of you, you may feel like you've been waiting on a promise that hasn't been completed just yet. You're waiting on a prayer that hasn't been answered just yet, where you just feel like, when is it going to be my time? And today I want to encourage you with this story that we're going to read from Luke chapter 1, verses 8 through 24. Today we're going to be taught, focusing in on that story about how God's timing is always right and how God appeared to Zechariah and gave him a life-changing miracle. In Luke 1 verses 8 through 24 in the beginning, we see this, that a priest named Zechariah gets an incredible message from God. And God sent an angel to deliver this incredible message. After many years of trying to have a baby, he and his wife Elizabeth are finally going to have a child. You can only imagine what the excitement, the fear, and just what the feelings that they were feeling in this very moment. For years they had been waiting to have a baby and it just seemed impossible. And for some of us, there's something that we are waiting for and it seems impossible. But I want to remind you that God's timing is always right. As in the story, you can only imagine what it is that Zechariah is feeling. He committed his entire life to obeying God, following, to, following his rules, listening to him. But he was still just waiting for God to give him a child. He so desperate, desperately wanted to have a child with Elizabeth, but it seemed impossible. Zechariah, in the beginning of this chapter, he goes to the temple. And in this temple, he's casting lots. Today, that's something like, it's an ancient version of drawing straws or something like a random name generator. In other words, Zachariah probably looked at the scheduling of his priestly work shift as random, nothing special or out of the ordinary. He, this was his day-to-day -day schedule. He would go to the temple to cast lots. But God that day decided to introduce Zachariah to a much bigger story. On this day, Zachariah's random appointment was no longer random. This appointment was actually used for a greater purpose to be made known today. Verses 11 through 18 says this, While Zachariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zachariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zachariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness and many will rejoice at this birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the Lord for the he will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And he will ca cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. When the angel appeared, he told Zachariah he was going to have a son. You can only imagine this is awesome and exciting news because this is exactly what Zachariah and Elizabeth have been waiting for. But it just seemed to be too good to be true. For Zachariah and Elizabeth, not having a child of their own was just very difficult. It almost seemed impossible. In those days, you have to remember, if a woman couldn't get pregnant, in those days, they often wondered if it had something to do with their character, if it had something to do with their sin, or if they just deserved God's punishment. That might seem strange to us today, but in that time and culture, men and women both sometimes questioned their character and questioned maybe they can't get pregnant because of their sin or who they are. 
Of course, Zacharias and Elizabeth's inability to have a baby didn't have anything to do with their character or supposed sins. Remember that, it had nothing to do with their character or supposed sins. But by the time the angel had told Zachariah they would finally have a baby, it seemed like God's timing was just too late. At this point, Zachariah and Elizabeth were pretty old to have a child, right? I mean, you've waited all this time and they finally tell you, the angel finally tells you you're going to have a child, but you're old and you're just kind of like, no, I'm, I'm kind of over that. And sometimes in our life, we've been praying for something for so long or been waiting for something for so long. And then when it finally happens, we feel like it's too good to be true or it's just too late. And that's normal. But we have to remember that God's timing is always right. As the story goes on, verse 18, it says this, Zachariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now, and my wife is also well along in the years. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zachariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why he was taking so long. When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. Zachariah struggled to believe that it was too good to be true. It wasn't because he was being rebellious or it wasn't because he was being distrustful of God. It was simply because he had been he had spent so much time being disappointed. It makes sense if you for temporarily forget how to feel hopeful. When you wait for something for so long, sometimes you feel you're living in that season of disappointment for a very long time. And that's what Zer Zachariah was. He was just disappointed and he had no hope and had no, no faith that God was going to complete his promise. When we look at how Zach Zachariah responded to the angel, it is clear that Zachariah thought it was too late. He needed Gabriel's reminder that his circumstances weren't random. God was indeed working. And as the story continues, verses 23 through 24 says this, when Zachariah's week of service in the temple was er over, he returned home. Soon afterward, his wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. How kind is the Lord, she exclaimed. He has taken, he has taken away my disgrace of having no children. Of course, God did exactly what the angel Gabriel promised that God would do. Elizabeth became pregnant with a baby who would one day grow up to become John the Baptist. And that's a pretty big deal. John the Baptist is the guy who would prepare the world to hear of Jesus's message and his arrival. God wasn't too late. For Zechariah, Elizabeth, and the whole world, God was right on time. I don't know what kind of questions or disappointments or doubts you're holding on to this Christmas season, but I want you to know, and I hope that you know, there is room for you in this Christmas story. And what I mean by that is just like there was room for Zachariah, there is room for you. God hasn't forgotten about you. If it feels like God's timing is off or your, prayer, your prayers aren't being answered, or it's too late for God to come through, I want you to hold on to this promise. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all that you do and He will show you which path to take. In life, we won't always understand things like God's timing. We sometimes want things to happen right away or right when we pray about it or we envision it. And for some of us, we just get totally impatient. We sometimes want our prayers answered way more faster than often. And we want them to be answered differently than what God intends for them or how God intends for them to be answered. We sometimes are a little more confident in our own understanding than God's understanding. 
And we sometimes want to follow our own paths rather than God's path. But I want you to know this. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. You have nothing to lose when it comes to trusting God. God is never early, never late. He's always right on time. And for some of you, you feel like giving up on the hope or the promises that God has promised you. But I want you to know that the moment that God comes through, it's going to be at the best and most perfect timing because God's timing is always right. If you're like Zachariah and you're struggling to trust or understand what God is up to, I hope that you remember how God came through for Zachariah and Elizabeth at the perfect time and how God used them to deliver John the Baptist, who would then prepare the way for Jesus's message to be heard all over. And that's pretty exciting because of what is true for them. I want you to know what is true for you. God's timing is always right.